What's going on, everybody? This is Clark Beckham, and we're back for another season of The Idol Breakdown. Let's get into it. First, we've got Mackenzie Soul. If you ever Ooh, boy. change your mind Oh, I was not expecting that. About leaving, leaving me behind Oh, <laughs> reach to me Dang it. Mackenzie Soul has over 12 million followers on TikTok. It's clear that Idol is looking for the dudes and gals with a giant TikTok following. I wonder how many viewers American Idol gets per week. And then you think about 12 million followers from one contestant. It's pretty substantial. So they're going after him. Here's the good part. He's not just a TikTok guy that does funny videos and goes viral there. He's a very, very good singer. Beautiful tone. I love his song choice and I love the arrangement vocally because right out of the gun, I tell people this when I'm coaching them for idol auditions, you have to show them your best in the first five seconds. You want to catch their focus immediately. I'm talking about from producers, uh, those rounds of auditions all the way to the judges, of course. And he does that. I think he does a little too much when it comes to runs. His tone is wonderful. And his runs, he's very, 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 very good. Like all the way good at middle range, little trill runs to like accent and enhance melody. He's not great at big like stunt runs, like octave, big, hey, yeah, like big, giant, like gospel runs. He tried two or three, and I wasn't a fan. Now, the stuff that I'm talking about that he does well is like the, um, if you ever, like that kind of stuff. Change your mind. Those that just kind of enhance the end of the phrase. Big, big thumbs up. Katie says, top 10. You could be in the top 10. Oh my God. Who is our first of many contestants that Katie predicts to be top 10. Do I agree? Yes, it really depends. I've got the new rating scale that I'm gonna do for each contestant and it's rate one to 10, my prediction of their success moving forward in the competition as they move forward. And it's hard because anybody can crush an audition and then that's what we loved about them is all they got. They, they can't really rep replicate consistently with different songs and pressure and all of that. So. It really depends. For McKenzie, I'm giving him a nine out of 10, which is my highest of the night. He's got a great personality. He's got 12 million TikTok followers for the producers to just hang on to probably as much as they can. Beautiful tone, wonderful range. He's very interesting. He's got a British accent, which is cool. If I could pick one person to be in the top 10, so far, it would it would be McKinsey. Next, we've got Tristan. Someone in medical for the Magnolias Blue. So I actually did a full reaction to this. They re they released this audition, and then Fremantle, who's American Idol, um, the production company that makes American Idol, they flag it. So I had a copyright strike potentially. Luckily, it didn't go public. It's being appealed. But Lord, that takes who knows how long. And then we've already watched the audition. So I'm actually going to just take the bit in that video and throw it right here. And man, you know, I know you guys watch and listen to me for musical critique and critique and we'll get there, I promise. But just this that soul and the heart of a mama who tried to do everything right a thing, life happens, and then she gets with a man who starts 
being abusive and endangers her and her child. She runs away. Then they're on the street wondering, did I do the right thing? I'm sure. I'm speculating, of course. but And then all the trouble that life has given her and her son. And then now to see him have a spotlight shown on him on American Idol, even if he doesn't make it past the first round of Hollywood Week and we never see him after this. For a mother to know that her son is seen, I speak from experience, for a mother to know that her son is seen and that everyone sees how wonderful he is, like she always has, is really special. Now his voice, Katie said it wasn't perfect. I didn't hear anything wrong, which... When something's, when you sing authentically and really nail it, you don't, a lot of times people that are listening can't hear the mistakes. Those mistakes go away. And that's what happened for me. If there were any, I didn't notice. Um, Right when he started singing, such authenticity in his voice. And you can tell that he's lived so much life, even at 15, through the way that he sings. Man, I loved his upper range. He has the that low draw that a lot of people can have just if they can hold a tune and have a country accent, grew up in it and emulated country singers. And he had that, and it was, it was wonderful. But then when he went up, Girl, da, 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 not leaving this room. That was so, that was such a nice part of his voice. And his pitch was great, man. A lot of times when, Singers push to that top and they're pushing chest. That top note will they'll kind of elevate with breath support to get higher to support themselves and then reach for that top note and come from underneath it. Uh, we're not leaving this room. Just a little under. He came up and and just sat right in the center of that pitch. I was never worried that he wasn't going to reach it because he wasn't reaching. He was giving himself full support to come all the way up. Leaving this room. Never never doubted that he was going to miss that note, and he never did. He did a, uh, the same run a couple times, and I could have heard it again. It was so nice. The run was... Duh. So instead of... Duh, so instead of bum 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 you do just a little like i call it like a trill that thing and then come down insert in that run insert that into the run and instead of uh, you have uh, sounds like all of a sudden a five note run but it's just that little trill and then following through the note and he did that a couple times and boy, those changes were sharp, sharp, sharp. You can take that trick and do crazy runs. Um, just continuing to move around the major scale. Uh, all of that were just different combinations and doing that same exact run that he did in different places of the scale. So he's... He's a bad dude. I don't know if he notice, knows it or not. But he's a bad dude. Next, we've got Kennedy Reed. Wake us up! And I love you, baby, like a strawberry loves his bed. I liked her piano player a lot. She was a beast. Um, she had some pitch issues right off the jump. That at first I was like, uh oh, are you in the wrong key? But she reeled it in. She's got a very, very powerful p- voice. And there are some flashes of some good stuff. I think she was highlighted on the show and maybe even went through to American Idol, up uh, to Hollywood Week, because of how funny the judges were during her audition. I think it ro- it it got them in a good mood. They were joking around with each other. Uh, I think the producer was like, yeah, we're going to use this audition for sure. Because they were funny. I thought it was they were funny. And then uh, her and Luke singing together 
Katie like folding Luke's arms. I thought that was genuinely funny. So I think they were in a good mood and they said, yes, here's the problem. And the whole like, I think you need some life. Let's show her some life because she's mortician. Like I said, she did have a very strong, powerful voice and a powerful voice is really just a powerful breath with your vocal cords situated in a certain way. If you wanna know how to do that yourself, I've got a vocal foundations course that I just put out. The link is in the description. Uh, it's a teachable link, but it's called Vocal Foundations. And I realized that there are a lot of singers, professionals and total beginners and everywhere in between that don't fully harness everything that they have at their disposal in their voice and in their body. And so this is just a course on how to breathe correctly, how to warm up, different things like that. And literally just doing this course one time, if you're a singer, I promise you, I promise you, you will sing, <clears throat> you'll sing better after this course immediately. We've got next, Meggie Iyer. Turn down the light, turn down the bed. Ooh. Turn down these voices inside my head. In these final hours, I will lay down my heart <laughs> and I feel the power. Meggie Iyer sings one of my favorite songs, one of the greatest songs of all time, um, I Can't Make You Love Me. She's got a couple pretty strong flashes that make me shriek and scream like a little girl. Some of the runs were really, really nice. One run was like super strong. A falsetto run that came out of nowhere, nailed that. Sharp stair steps is what you want as a run, and those were sharp. She had another one where her delivery was just so emotional and there was just a little detour of the melody that she took that was very effective. Apart from those moments, uh, I liked her. Um, there was something, I was missing some sizzle. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm not exactly sure how to articulate it, but she did sound rehearsed to me. And what I mean by that is when I was hearing her sing, obviously everybody's rehearsed, but when I hear her sing, I remember, I remember thinking every single choice that she's making, I can tell that she has rehearsed it a million times and everything's planned out, which is good to do in the planning stage. But then when you sing it, your job as a singer is to make people think that those choices are just coming to you as you sing them. Kind of like an actor, when they have lines that someone else wrote, a good actor is able to say those lines in a way that it appears that those words are just coming to them. Same way with vocal runs or melodic detours, lyrics themselves, all that stuff. But overall, I don't want this to sound like I was eh about her. I this was she was one of my favorites of the night. Another top ten prediction for Katie. So so far we've got two out of the top ten in the first four auditions. Half the people we've seen are going to be top ten, according to Katie. Next we've got Aji. Something's got a hold on me lately. No, I don't know myself anymore. Aji. I might be I might I might be alone on this one. This might be one of the contestants that I'm alone and everybody tells you I'm crazy, which is fine. I wasn't a big fan. I thought he was doing a Teddy Swims impersonation. Um he's got a good voice and he has runs that were super clean. Kind of like McKenzie, his like some of his like short three note runs were really strong, really strong and sharp, but the um, lose control run, it's kind of like the Tennessee whiskey run with Chris Stapleton, 
it's a big it's it's part of the melody and there are specific notes in there and timing of those notes of that run and he kind of just like many singers do it's a pet peeve of mine he kind of just throws all the notes at the wall and then when the next line comes starts to sing instead of places them in the pocket when you can put runs and notes where it feels really good and rhythmic it it makes the run so much better and all it takes is to slow it down take the notes themselves and really study them and do it slow motion figure out exactly what they are and then practice i guarantee in five minutes i could get him singing that run perfectly one other note is he was tending to rush ahead of Fredley, of our piano player. Um, rushing can be a problem. It's typically just a sign that he doesn't have a lot of experience playing or singing with a band or an accompanist, uh, which is fine and it's it's a it's an easy fix, but it's gotta get fixed. You gotta think about that. Um, oh, I forgot to give you guys scores on the other people. Tristan, I give a, oh gosh, sorry, retroactive here. Tristan, on the success rate, one to 10, on moving forward, I give him a five and a half. I think he might be a little too young. He's got some good stuff, but I don't know how he's going to do in Hollywood week. Kennedy Reed, unfortunately, I give a one. I, I just don't think she's going to make it past the first round. Uh, would love to be wrong. Maggie Iyer, I give a five. That's lower than I thought. I give a five. I think that's too low. Six and a half. Uh, Aji, I'm giving a five. Um, there are a lot of great singers. He's got a good story. He's got a good personality. We'll see what he does in Hollywood Week, but he's got to do, in my opinion, he's got to do better. When um, Lionel Richie said, man, you're not trying to be like anyone else. You're just trying to be like you. Told me that he doesn't know who Teddy Swims is. Because to me... He was just doing the Teddy Swims impersonation. Uh, Blake Prohl. It's time you hear it In case you didn't know Baby, I'm crazy about you Pretty cool. I don't think we've ever had an NFL player on, on Idol. Here's the thing about Blake. He's not a singer that's going to blow you away with like vocal ability and stunt singing and high notes and stuff. But here's what sets Blake apart from every other contestant of the night. And it sounds corny, but it's absolutely the truth. When he sings, I believe him. When he sings, I genuinely believe he's going through whatever that song is about. Sometimes when people sing, you're like, man, they I can tell. They're actually heartbroken. Something's going on. Something's going on with them. That song's, that song's real. And there's nothing going on with them. They're just performing it well. And they're just believable as they sing and as they perform. And that's what's going on with Blake. I could listen to him for a long time. I could have just, I would totally listen to his audition again. Now that these videos are back up, I'm about to say something that usually makes people roll their eyes. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Now, why would you do that? First of all, I waited this long because if you're still watching, you like this video. So if you want this kind of stuff in your YouTube suggested videos, then for you, it would be good for you to like this video because then it'll tell YouTube, hey, I like this stuff. Give me some more of this stuff. If you like good singers, if you like reaction videos and reviews and things like that. Subscription. Subscription is really just out of the goodness of your heart. When you subscribe, it tells YouTube, hey, people are invested in this guy, in this, in these videos. And so it pushes my video to other people's uh, suggested videos. A notification bell, I have posted three or four videos outside of this Idol Breakdown episode. And I'm gonna do that as news comes up, like the news that Katy Perry is out. I did a video on who's gonna replace her, um, who I think should replace her, and all the candidates. Stuff like that, those videos, I'm not gonna announce, and they're just gonna come out. So if you wanna be aware of when they're coming out, 
you would hit the notification bell. All right, let's keep going. Michaela McCall. Here I am. I'm yours. <laughs> I love Santa Barbara. What a cool arrangement. I think, in my opinion, this might be another one I'm alone on. In my opinion, the arrangement was cooler. The arrangement was better than her voice. She had some flashes where she hit. There were some moments where she sounded like a million bucks. Now, I looked to Chanley. I was like, what do you think? And she's like, I love her. I was like, okay. Well, then I need to rethink things because Chanley's got a really good ear. So I would love to hear what you guys think. I wasn't a big fan. Um necessarily i loved loved the arrangement the piano player was into it notice that a lot of these contestants part of their stories was i had a video go viral and i was like "Ooh, virality i would like some of that let's let's try to get that person see if it rubs off um i give her a six out of ten that's pretty high i think i was just ebbing and flowing as as we went on in different moods I'd give her a five, actually. Blake Prohl, I gave a seven. We're just going to have to see if Blake has uh, more than just the ballad, like crushing ballads, and that emotional thing. How long is that going to last? Like, How long can he get by on just that? Assuming that's all he has. Maybe he has more. Um, Odell Bunton Jr. Oh, I know I left. Oh. When you live. Where did that go? Chill, I'm resting in my grave. Yes, sir. Baby, just bring it on home. Oh, bring it on home. Yikes. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have are super all the way soulful gospel singer to look forward to every single week starting in hollywood week he's all the way good he's got great rasp great tone all of the runs you can think of he can do them great story seems like a great guy comes across he's very likable um i don't know how far he's going to get in the competition i think he'll go far Every year, there are these gospel, wonderful, talented singers that we get to enjoy. But they never, not never, they almost never go the, go the distance. Even though they might be the best singer that we have. Um, I.e. Joshua Ledette and many others. Just because you can do runs doesn't mean you have to. He's a great example of someone who only does runs when he has when he does have to. Every every run was drenched in passion. That's what we want. He reminds me of Smokey Norfolk. I guarantee that's someone he loves. Here's a, here's a word for all contestants. If you were a contestant and you are listening to this, do not try to sing like him. Every year when people go to Hollywood week, they kind of start hanging around everybody and people start singing. All the contestants, they start singing, practicing, and just getting to know each other. They're gonna hear Odell and they're gonna go, oh my gosh, he's a beast. Man, what am I doing here? I need to, I need to do that. Like everyone's freaking out when he sings and I can do some runs. Mackenzie, Maggie, don't try to sing like him. Don't. You got a thing. Do that thing. Do not try to sing these stunt runs like he can do. Oh my gosh, that octave thing that he did. <laughs> Don't try that stuff. Don't try that stuff. Do you. Uh, they give him a platinum ticket after the fact, which was interesting to me because last year, all the platinum tickets were given in the audition. And my theory, which I am very confident about, is the producers decided who was gonna get a platinum ticket before they actually 
auditioned for the judges. And if I was a producer, I would have probably done the same thing because only one city gets a platinum ticket. So you don't want to give it out too soon and then someone else comes along that's way better and you're like, crap, I should have given it to them. But you also don't want to hold on to it and then at the end, the last couple of people, you're like, well, I got to give it to somebody and then they're not good. So I understand the planning. The problem was someone would do an audition and then they wouldn't do very well in the judge's audition like they must have, I assume they did, in the producer's audition. Or the judges just don't like them. So now they got to fake and go crazy, give them a platinum ticket, and then it's just it just feels weird. So this time, it seems like they waited for everyone to audition and then got together and be like, all right, Odell's getting the platinum, and then they give it to him. Up, They upgrade his ticket, which I think is a good idea. I wonder if they'll do that with everybody. Jake Blocker. You have my heart, I have yours, and it's all I need and more. I was wrong. I really liked Jake right when he started singing. I was like, sweet. I just kind of relaxed. I didn't really take any notes. I was just like, I could listen to this dude forever. I loved, and the, the stuff he was doing with his face, I didn't mind it. Katie, Katie was weirded out by it, clearly. And that's why she said no, I think, it was because of the weird stuff he was doing with, her, with his face. And she was like, you can sing and make those sounds just singing. And I think my biggest pet peeve was not that she didn't like his facial things. Was that she didn't communicate it very well. She didn't really say, she's like, you could just sing. I don't know if you're doing things to make a certain sound. Has anyone ever told you this before? Well, you haven't said anything yet. You just said, you can just sing and make sounds, basically, is what she said. And he is so agreeable, of course, like we all would be in that position. Whatever she said, yes, ma'am. Yep. Uh, no, no, no one's ever, no. Tell me more. Like, he has, He's not going to say, like, I don't know what you're talking about. Lionel randomly says no. It's odd how he said no, because he was like, oh, my stars, and smiling, and then he said no. I'm glad he goes through. I think he absolutely has Philip Phillips vibes and potential. Um, I'm a I'm a fan of his. Seems like a super nice guy. Took the nose really, really well. Um, and I like him. I'm glad he's here. We've got McKenna Brineheart. But before we talk about McKenna, our last contestant who made Chanley and I both cry, you might be watching this right now in the premiere. If you are, great. You're killing it. So premiere is this video releases at six o'clock central time on Monday nights, just the night after American Idol airs. And it releases live like a TV show. And then we can all watch it together and chat in the chat room of the premiere. And then right after the premiere in the chat, I send a link to a Q&A, a live stream that I do on YouTube. That is for all of you to ask me questions, continue to talk about what's going on, ask me to cover anything I didn't cover, disagree with me, which is the most fun, honestly. And then beyond that, for five bucks a month, which is like a Starbucks per month, you can get access to more stuff. You can become a member. Here's what members get, a Groove Crew member. First of all, if you're in the premiere, you can see the Groove Crew members right now because their names are highlighted. So I see their comments on the Q&As, live streams, premiere. The coolest thing is we have watch parties. So I live stream myself watching American Idol. I mute during the show so you can't hear the audio of my TV and yours. So you just watch it with me live. And then during the commercials, I'll mute the TV, unmute myself, and then we talk about what we just thought. It's a real fun time and a good community. So if you're interested in being part of that crew, the Groove Crew, you can click the Join button at the bottom right hand of this video. You've got to be on a computer. You can't be on your phone. Unless they change that. Maybe you can. You'll know. 
McKenna Brinehart. And the searching and the healing and the hurting like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Man, they released her audition a while ago, and I did a video, which I'll make sure to link. Uh, and they they showed all of it this time. So the video that they released a week or two ago is just a condensed version. And I cried then. And, and I knew it was coming. She's got a beautiful, like Lionel says, smoky voice. She's got such a unique, heartwarming story. And oh my gosh, yo, when she started singing the, was it Tumbleweeds? Her mom's song? Man, I like that more than the other song. And sometimes when a singer just enjoys a song and just sings it, they'll do better than when they've rehearsed a song to be the best it can be and then they sing it. I tell people in the Vocal Foundations class, and then in students that I have, that I teach one-on-one, -on -one, the best thing you can do, the best thing you can do to sing well is to love what you're singing beyond all things, beyond all things. And you can tell that she really loves singing her mom's song and having her family all there. I think the nerves were gone too because, maybe not gone, but the pressure was off because I think she knew she made it at that point. It was great. It was really good. I'm curious to see how she does in Hollywood Week because in Hollywood Week, we're not going to have the euphoria of her incredible story and reuniting with her family and all of that in our minds and hearts as we hear her voice. We're just going to have her voice next to another person's voice next to another person's voice. So we'll see. Thank you guys for watching. If you're in the premiere, you will see the link right now to go to the live stream. So go ahead and click that link and you will see me in this exact room. Hopefully not with the same clothes on. We'll see. I don't know. Let's see if I changed during the day. Um, you guys are awesome. Next week, we'll start right again. Stay safe. I don't really have a tag just to say goodbye with. Goodbye. Goodbye.